We get a lot of questions in Systems Academy about coding for price action. So I'd like to take a few minutes to discuss how we think about it and use it in our program. Really, coding for price action has two distinct advantages for discretionary price action traders. It first accelerates the student's learning of price action first principles because they have to code them accurately and concisely in order to get the code to operate properly. This means that they have to be able to teach the computer how to see the chart the way that they want it to be seen. Second, once the code has been tested and deployed, it helps the trader optimize their time and improves their focus because it offloads a substantial amount of the real-time decision-making to the algorithms that they've developed. The tertiary effect is that this also improves trade management because the trader no longer has to spend as much of their real-time effort doing the analysis which they have already offloaded to the computer. And thus they have more time to properly manage their trades. So to discuss this today, I wrote a short algorithm here along the bottom you see expressed in the histogram that's just identifying trend and trading range bars. I'll give a brief overview of what it's showing and then how I developed it and how it can be used. So all of the bars below the zero line are trading range bars and all of the bars above the zero line are trend bars. The bars below the zero line the gray, orange, and blue bars express three different tendencies of the bars. So gray bars are purely trading range bars. Orange bars are bear bars in a trading range. Blue bars are bull bars in a trading range. Then above the zero line, the light green bars are bull trend bars. The dark green bars are bull trend bars, but with a bear close. And here we have the bear trend bars and bear trend bar with a bull close. Then the gray trend bars are inside bars that appear within a trending environment. So the logic of this is pretty simple. It's based on the first principles of market cycles, and that starts with breakouts. So it looks for breakouts, and after that, monitors for highs and lows and in the case of a bull breakout, as soon as we get the first lower low, it starts considering the environment a trading range. And even if it's a channel, um, obviously we know channels are sloped trading ranges. So depending on how steep the slope is, one would trade it differently and also likely expect subsequent breakouts. But say, for example, here, one of the things the code does is when we get the first reversal after a trending move in one direction, so in this case, bear trend, bar four is a strong bull breakout. And there are some other context pieces of information that suggest it would likely get follow through. But for the sake of simplicity, this algorithm sees this bar as a transition bar and marks it as a bull bar inside of a trading range. As soon as we get the strong close above it, then this gets marked as a trend bar. The same would be true of a bull trend, which gets a strong bear close against it. So what the algorithm is doing to determine breakouts is first taking the signal data from the paint bar that you see that's, that's coloring these bars. So the signals, the breakout signals are being derived from this code and then getting passed through some very preliminary filters for the trend and trading range um, histogram. And as soon as we move into a trading range environment, which we do here on bar 10, all outside bars are also considered trading range bars. So even if they are a strong bull close in a previously bull trend, the indicator will start counting trading range bars from that point on and require subsequent bull breakouts to be sufficiently strong to qualify as new breakouts rather than continuation of previous trend. So again, this is really keeping fastidiously to the principles of price action and the market cycle. So as soon as we get a trading range bar, the algorithm begins tracking the highs and lows of the 
trading range. As long as we continue to get trading range bars, bars below the histogram, the algorithm will populate variables with those highs and lows anytime the range expands. So this bar closed below the trading range low qualifies as a trend bar. It gets a lower high. So this is a also a trend bar. These are three, three bars down, but this is an opposing close. So if we see these opposing closes inside of a trend, it typically means the trend is weakening. As we see here, trend is weakening, even though that's a, a weak bar. Trend is weakening here. Bear trend is weakening, obviously, here. Here, the, here it was just after the breakout of a trading range, so less of a sign of weakness rather than a test of the, the breakout point. Also end of day, so difficult to trade that. But we can see here, once this fails and gets a higher high, bull breakout inside of a trading range, the algorithm tracks the highs and lows until we get to this point. And this breakout qualifies enough to warrant a trend bar. And then again, we get trend up. This is identifying as an outside bar, even though it has the same lows. So higher high, but identical lows. And here we get the end of the trend. Here is the beginning of the trading range at 27, which lasts until 41, which makes this bear bar, the 34, a bear bar inside of a trading range, as it does the bull bar here, bull bar inside of a trading range. This becomes a test target as well. We see the move, the sell-off after the climactic buying in 42 come down and immediately test this high right here before coming back up to test the inside bar here, which also creates a bull trend. However, when that fails and we see the bulls who bought below 52, believing that this was a new trend to retest the high, when those bulls got trapped, they bought lower and exited here. And then we resume down. So the failure to get back to the previous highs and what we can see from the histogram, which is climactic buying and strong selling, which gets us back down to below the lows. And then another attempt by bulls to string together a trend, which also fails, leads to subsequent bear breakout and trading range below the EMA, which then gets a subsequent breakout. During each of these phases of trading range behavior, if a trader had been trading only in the direction of the previous trend, then they would have gotten out with minimal losses and mostly profits. So here, the previous trend was up. If traders bought below bars and took profits at average bar size, they could have had a scalp here. They could have attempted this scalp, gotten a strong close against it, bought again, gotten out at the test, and then traded this range from the bear side after getting the bear trend bars down into that. So there are a lot of different ways you could use the information this generates. We can go back here. This is a good example of a prolonged trading range after the strong bear trend down with a few different pauses, the outside bar, outside bar, and then pull back to test. So wedge one, two, three, test of the two high, and then transition into trading range. So a very typical pattern and we see on 19, this indicator tells us that we are already beginning to exhibit trading range price action. That continues until bar 42, but after that breakout, we get an inside bar. So we don't get a strong follow through bar. Instead, we get inside bar and with a very strong breakout against it. This immediately disrupts the case for bull momentum and coming back to test any of the opening range levels. Instead, we get the single test back up and failure to reapproach that high and then subsequent breakouts. So even if someone had been trading within this trading range from the long side and waited to buy below bars, they could have still gotten a few scalps out of it. And so long as they were buying below the lowest point after we made the 53 low, could have also even gotten out of that with a break-even position and even a profit if they had bought lower 
I wanted to share this today because there is a lot of value in coding for price action. Being able to code for our particular preferences enables us to become more at ease during the trading day and able to better respond to what the market is giving us rather than at some point imposing our will upon it. So coding for price action is, in my opinion, not antithetical to what a discretionary price action trader does all day long. It is simply offloading part of the decision making to an algorithm, which is still assessing the price action bar by bar and removing a bit of the energy we would have to spend doing some analysis so that we can focus on trade management and higher time frame context analysis. So a properly developed piece of price action code can help us first internalize the price action principles that most resonate with us and streamline our thinking so that we have more mental energy for properly managing positions which is where we will see some of the most substantial effect on our P&L. So I hope this was helpful, and I look forward to hearing from you all. Trade well.